We've seen a lot of exciting things outside in our virtual Thrive On Technology Tour at the Scott Learning Center. I think now is the appropriate time for us to interject the preliminary data that we've collected so far this year. We're still in the business of collecting Ligus information from both plant-based information and insect infestation and in insect damage ability. But we've also, early in the season, collected a lot of thrips numbers of various kinds and we'll continue to follow that up as best we can through the summer. But we do have some preliminary results that I think are very exciting as we evaluated the response of Thrive On Technology against thrips in the early season here at the Learning Center. What we did this year was we actually washed thrips in soapy water. We sieved those thrips and that solution from the plants. Then we used our microscopes and all the other tools that we have here at the Learning Center to count the numbers of adult and immature thrips that existed on the plants. There are all kinds of questions that can be answered from that, and there are other questions that are asked from that sort of data. What we've learned so far is, is pretty exciting and it requires some follow-up, but I think it's time to share some of that with you. And if you look at the results that we've seen so far, We've actually, in the Thrive On Technology containing plots, our thrips arrived about mid-June. These plots were relatively late planted. We had the typical thrip species that exist here in the Delta, and I, I spare you the gory details of, of all of that. What we saw was a pretty significant reduction in the number of adult thrips in the Thrive On Technology containing plots. That is one part of the puzzle, but we also have other data that's complementary to that and helps ask and answer other questions related to how our thrips infestation proceeded. Adult thrips are one indicator of, of the numbers of, of pests that are present in the field. However, the next question is, what about reproduction of those pests? That is best measured by nymphal thrip numbers. We counted those and separated the adults from the nymphs in our sampling process early in the season. We wound up with uh, significant differences in the number of nymphal thrips in the Thrive On technology containing plots. When you, when you think about what that means, it can mean a lot of things. And, and we have other questions to ask and some questions to answer from this. I think from this data, we can see that there were reductions in the number of nymphal thrips in those plots that contain the technology. The next questions we have to ask and answer in this matter is, is that because they were, there were less eggs and, and less feeding and all the things that go along with the reduction of, of thrips damage in the plot, was there less reproduction? Were the nymphal thrips actually killed? We will measure a lot of those things as we, we develop this data set into a more broader across a lot of geographies and, and we do some more in-depth sampling. When you look at the two together, the number of total thrips was significantly reduced on two of the sampling dates where we had the most thrips uh, after the, the infestation really began in earnest. We reduced the number of, of total thrips in the Thrive On technology containing plots as compared to either of the other treatments we tested in the field. So I think these are very exciting results. They will follow through in the damage scorings we saw in the plants. We will follow this up with yield and plant mapping data at the end of the year when we get closer to harvest and get the plots defoliated. Uh, I think this is very encouraging and very exciting data when we look at the response of these plants to the thrips and the thrips response to the technology.